Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxers, and today it's a big three divisional matchup as the Whalers of New Bedford come to town to face the two and five boxers. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the turf here at Brockton High School. The breaking news out of this past weekend, senior captain Jeanne Dimanche Silva, broken collarbone done for the year. It's a big loss for Brockton up front as she played the right forward position. And she is replaced as captain by the junior Madison Hendrigan. Kayla Murphy, of course, taking that hard kick to the face last game against Durfee, a five, uh, yeah, five to one win against the Hilltoppers in the first big three divisional matchup. No concussion. No concussion for Kayla Murphy as we'll have a goal kick for the Whalers. The Whalers are wearing their away red jerseys with white trim, the Boxers. Their home whites with red and black trim. This is Hendrigan looking up top for Murphy. It's going to roll just a bit too far into the awaiting arms of the goalkeeper, Avery Roderick, the freshman. Only two goalkeepers listed on the New Bedford roster. The other is senior forward slash goalkeeper, Haley Almeida. And so New Bedford opting to go with the freshman in net. Brockton's goalkeeper who's been phenomenal all year, Tori Viola Lothry. We have to apologize again for mispronouncing her name for the last three and a half years. Viola Lothry has been stellar in net all year for the boxers. And highlighting that was last week's matchup against the Durfee Hilltoppers, a huge victory for the two and five boxers. Because everyone knows the rules, you win the division, you're in the playoffs. That of course is the rule highlighted every year in Brockton High School hockey. It's Brockton annually kills Durfee and New Bedford. They're only four wins of the year. That's an opportunity for the Hilltoppers, number eight sending it. That is Claire Blanchard, and still loose in the box. Blanchard trying to spin with it and get a shot off, unable to do so. And now it's Marion, Elena Marion blocking it away. And Marion tapping it up for number three. That is Isha Tokman. Now it's Hendrigan looking for Marion. Doesn't connect and it bounces back to number two, Olivia Shaw with two goals last game against Weymouth. Game was played this past Saturday in Weymouth in a torrential downpour on turf. You can only imagine how that one ended. It's number 11, Danelle Davids playing mid field tonight. Now Marion turning on the Jets, it's a foot race. And now Marion trying to create some space and turn the corner. She gets a shot off that's gonna go off the outside of the apron. Lena Marion, of course, the youngest child of John Marion. Who is James Edgar reincarnated. Yeah, 
Marion going back and forth with Jayla Smith. Smith's pass just off the mark for Marion. It bounces back to midfield for Jayla Smith. Now gets it up to Kayla Murphy. It bounces back to Hendrigan. And New Bedford sends it back across midfield. Excellent night for soccer here in Brockton. The official weather report brought to you by the Mad Dog Research Team. 62 degrees as Kayla Murphy sends it for Tokeman. Now Tokeman stopping and spinning with it. Sends a cross in and just over the mark. But Lena Marion's there on the other side. She sends it back across into the box and Jayla Smith can't get to it. 62 degrees here. A slight breeze with gusts up to about three miles an hour. And now it's a foot race to right in front of the boxer's bench. It's going to be handled by Olivia Shaw. And now sent out of bounds by Tori Viola Lothry. Seven minutes into the first half, still scoreless between the big three divisional rivals, New Bedford Whalers and your Brockton Boxers. Some big win here for Brockton would put them in excellent shape. 2-0 and in the division. As Lana Marion creates some space and sends a cross in. And number 14 gets a shot off, but it's gonna shank it wide. That was the freshman Vanessa Dos Anjos on the latest boxer opportunity. Lara Cardozo getting ready to come into the game for the boxers. for throwing right in front of the boxer's bench. They're shielding it out of bounds. Cardoza will come into the game to replace Jalen Curran-Stewart. Rather, that's Olivia Shaw. Goal kick for the boxers, 31 minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half. Boxer Athletics. It's quiet here at Marciano until Friday. And this very same Lady Boxers team takes on the West Bridgewater Wildcats. Pulling double duty that day as we will then travel to Westwood for the Annual end to the Catholic Conference swing. Severian Hawks against the Boxers football team. Should be a riveting matchup. You'll want to tune in for that one. Popped out of bounds by Cardozo and New Bedford will have their first corner kick of the night. 
It will be number 10 taking it. That is Alyssa Arujo. Arujo curving it right in front of the net. It's headed and into the arms of Tori Viola Lafford. Lothry, excuse me. Olivia Mathelier to take this free kick. Jayla Smith up to Murphy. Murphy with some space launches a shot and it's saved by Avery Roderick. This one sent ahead and it's a foot race. New Bedford looking like it's gonna come out on top and setting it just a little bit too long and out of bounds was number 11, Sam Panecho. Goal kick for Viola Law 3. Tokeman now on the far side. Starting and stopping, now sending it to Hendrigan. Comes back around to Tokeman, who sends a shot in, blocked away, and now Murphy with some space, and she shoots and scores! Kayla Murphy out in front. It's gonna be unassisted because it touched a Whaler last, and the boxers are up one to nothing with 27 minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half. Now Murphy with it again. And Bedford's defense is going to take over. Boxers, 26 minutes now left in the first half. The goal, Kayla Murphy, unassisted. Now Marion turning on the pressure to create a boxer throw in right in front of the New Bedford bench. A little bit too much mustard on it from Dos Anjos, sending it out of bounds. Kept in very athletically by Jayla Kern Stewart. Now Cardozo in a foot race with number 17 of the Whalers. Winning that and sending it out of bounds was Karin Stewart. Oh. 
Murphy coming away with it, but spinning with it is Arujo. Arujo setting it up and into the awaiting boot of Jayla Smith, who sends it out of bounds. This one's going to be picked up by Viola Law 3. Positive news from down on the farm. The Lady Boxers JV team defeated the Whalers earlier this afternoon by a score of 10 to nothing. When asked about the win, the JV coach said, I felt so bad. Twenty-three minutes now left in the first half. Lawfrey picks this one up. Still one to nothing. Boxers over the Whalers. Marion turning the corner, sending it to Murphy out in front. Dos Anjos. Can't keep hold of it, and Marion sends it out of bounds over the goal line for a free goal kick for the Whalers. Serena De Silva into the game, the senior midfielder. And number five, Kyla Colors. Getting ready to come into the game for the boxers as well. Well, a law three sending this one out of bounds. A throw in for the Whalers. Danielle Davids. Now up to Hendrigan. Smith deflecting it to Murphy. Now picked up just inside the box by Avery Roderick. Sending it behind the boxer's defensive line, but cleared out by Mathelier. Sean Colors into the game for the boxers. They replace. Marion. And Tokman. Bedford with the inaccurate pass to give the boxers some relief. Now blocked away nicely by number seven, Curtin Stewart. Ruscio sending it back to the back mids of the Whalers. 
Bedford with some sustained offensive pressure. And Procton's finally able to break up. Now Murphy with some room to run on the far side. Caleb Murphy sends a shot and looking for a second and it's gonna go just wide. Please Andre into the game for the Whalers. New Bedford with a short bench, only four players available for substitutions tonight for New Bedford. Broughton with only five subs as the boxers have had numerous injuries to their roster. So this matchup of New Bedford and Brockton, it's gonna be the marquee matchup, we've been told by athletic director Kevin Cairo. New Bedford, possibly one of the best teams in the state against the undefeated Boxers. Boxers coming off a seven to two win against the BC High Eagles. Now it's Dos Anjos with a cross into the middle that connected with Whalers. Now Mathelier blocking and sending it down to the corner. And Bedford launching a shot and it's going to deflect wide and out of play. So that was a Rougeau on the shot for the Whalers. Sixteen forty-five left in the first half. Brockton hanging on to that one to nothing lead. Lone goal scored by Kayla Murphy unassisted. Dos Anjos up to Murphy who can't quite get ahead of the pass. Bedford thrown deep in their own territory. Mentioned the doubleheader Friday, but the buzz around town is the triple header on Thursday night. We've got back to back to back professional sports going on. For those of you who just a month ago were complaining that there's nothing to watch other than baseball, welcome back to the glory days. It's Thursday, four o'clock. First pitch in Houston. It's the Red Sox and Astros kick off the 
American League Divisional Series. Now Kayla Murphy launching a shot and she's got her second of the night. Kayla Murphy with a snipe from 25 yards out. And that is a huge goal to put the boxes up two to nothing with 15 minutes left in the first half. Kayla Murphy launching it southpaw off balance. Boston goals scored in the 14th minute of the first half by number 10, Kayla Murphy. Boston substitution number 23, Lara Cardoza. So 4 o'clock Thursday afternoon, Astros Red Sox first pitch is the Red Sox begin their playoff push in the American League Divisional Series. Seven o'clock, this is the one I'm excited about. The reigning defending Western Conference champion, Nashville Predators, coming up to face the Bruins at the Garden, seven o'clock. And then at 8.30, to top it all off, we've got the New England Patriots traveling down to Tampa Bay to face the Buccaneers, Thursday night football action. Not a big fan of the color rush jerseys. Saw the picture earlier today, not a big fan. So the Patriots are 0 for 2 in color rush jerseys in the Mad Dog scorebook. Of course, last year's was a ripoff of the, of the Houston Texans home jersey. That navy blue with the red shoulders. I think the way to go is bright red. You break out the old red throwback jerseys with blue and white stripes on the shoulders and the Pat Patriot white helmet. But I'm not paid to design jerseys. Eleven minutes and forty five seconds now left in the first half. Now two to nothing. Kayla Murphy with both of the boxer goals, both unassisted. And New Bedford will have a free kick from, we'll call it about 30 yards out from net. It's at the 20 yard line of the football markings on the near side. Number three to take the free kick, that is Aliyah Padilla. Right on net. And it's going to be offsides against the Whalers. And so Brockton escapes on skate. Sending it across for Tokeman. Back to Hendrigan. And New Bedford takes over on downs. Again, creating some pressure. New Bedford forced to send it out of bounds, thrown for the boxers deep in Whaler territory. A 
And Murphy with another shot, and this one's gonna sail high and wide to the left. Haley Almeida finds her way back into the game for the Whalers. Now a long shot is going to be just wide. Kayla looking for that hat trick. We do have some hats here in the press box. Not needed yet because it is now 60 degrees and dropping. Now David's good defensive play, and this one rolling down to Tori Viola Laffrey, who might have picked that one up outside the box, but the refs missed it. Refs missing a lot of things tonight, as one of the two officials was coming from Braintree, hit a spot of traffic, and didn't get here until we were about 10 minutes into the first half after he arrived right as Brockton scored their first goal. Now New Bedford with an opportunity. And converging on it are three boxers. No harm, no foul for the Whalers. Or for the boxers, rather, who will have a throw in after sending it out of bounds off of one of the Whalers. Davids to Mathelier. The Bedford launching a weak ball out in front. Almost enough to create an opportunity. As we have a Whaler down. That is number 10, the senior captain Alyssa Arujo. Free kick for the Whalers, about 30 yards out. This one bouncing in on Viola Lothary, who picks it up for the easy save. 6.24 left in unofficial time. Our annual reminder that the official time is kept on the field by the referees. The scoreboard clock will stop at two minutes. Mad Dog research team in the press box has a stopwatch that is usually within 15 seconds. Last game we were way off. Last game, the last two minutes lasted four minutes and 51 seconds. Hendrigan, who has moved up to play forward, creating some space. Now sending it to Murphy in front. And Tokman there for reinforcements, but Brockton can't get a clean shot off, and it goes into the awaiting arms of Avery Roderick. Next week, the make or break week for the boxers. Columbus Day action here at Marciano Stadium as the Brockton High boys team 
takes on the Mansfield Hornets. We'll be here for that one, bright and early, Columbus Day morning. We have 4.15 left to go in the first half, two to nothing boxers. We sent a message to the big three last Tuesday night against Durfee defeating what was supposed to be a strong Hilltoppers team. Four to one. Bedford with the throw in, but they were very far inbounds when they released that ball, so it will be called an illegal throw slash handball by the Whalers. Jill Smith now tapping it out to Hendrigan. Hendrigan looking up for Murphy, but it's broken up by the Whalers defense. Now Cardozo sending it out of bounds into the boxer bench. Almeida right to the awaiting boot of Jayla Smith. Cardozo heading it out of bounds so Inch by inch, the Whalers getting closer to the boxer's net. <laughs> this one broken up by Davids. Two minutes left on the clock. The stopwatch is fairly accurate tonight. But you never know with the official time on the field. Murphy's gonna be whistled for the offsides. The ball was sent up. Three seconds earlier would have been a breakaway for the boxers. Now Marion with the turn in the corner, sending a cross in, and it's going to be picked out of thin air by Roderick. David's coming away with this one. Sending it into the Whalers bench. We have about a minute left here in the first half. Two to nothing boxers. Both goals scored unassisted by Kayla Murphy. Dangerous play by the boxers resulting in a Whalers free kick from the 43 yard line. About 50 yards out from net. Saw a goal scored from that far out for the BC High Eagles last week. Almost the exact same spot as Davids. Can't blast this one through the back mids of the Whalers. About 15 seconds left in the first half. Referee is not allowed to blow the whistle if there is a clear offensive opportunity for either team. Jayla Smith clearing this one out. Whistles blow. And again, within 15 seconds of the stopwatch. The score at halftime, two to nothing. Both goals scored by Kayla Murphy unassisted. That's where we stand 
After 40 minutes, we're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Green hat, <laughs> red hat, oops. <laughs> red shirt, blue shirt, yellow shirt, oops. <laughs> yellow pants, red pants, green pants, oops. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between the New Bedford Whalers and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action, and as you can see, it's a full moon, and there's been lots of action tonight. Two to nothing, the score, both goals scored by Kayla Murphy. And now Alicia Tobin looking to add to the score. Shoots in a nice save by Roderick. Avery Roderick has been strong in net for the Whalers tonight. Brockton with numerous opportunities. Now, onside's ruled, and New Bedford not going to have an opportunity is Curran Stewart and Danelle Davids teaming up to send this one back towards the New Bedford end of the field. The Whalers wearing their away red jerseys, red shorts with white trim. The Boxers wearing their home whites with red and black trim. Brockton looking to inch closer to 500. Just getting a two and five after the game against Durfee. They did play Weymouth on Saturday. That is the game that Janae Demanche Silva broke her collarbone. Out for the season. So the senior captain for the boxers will be watching her teammates Fight from the sidelines. This one cleared out by Mathelier. You bet for throwing deep in boxer territory. Jayla Smith sending this one back. Across midfield, looking for Kayla Murphy, and New Bedford will send it out of bounds. Now New Bedford in a foot race, it's going to be picked up by Tori Viola Lothery.
Again, a big week for Boxer Athletics. Friday afternoon, 3.30. Start here at Marciano Stadium, the West Bridgewater Wildcats against this very same Lady Boxers team. And then we travel to Severian in, high in Westwood as the Boxer football team finishes the Catholic Conference swing. Looking to get their first win of the Catholic against the Catholic Conference. Could it happen? Maybe Severian's one and two. Losing two games for the first time in four and a half years. New Bedford's second corner kick of the day. Corner kick sent directly into the box and bouncing under the awaiting leg of Haley Almeida. Five minutes into the second half. Still 2 nothing. Kayla Murphy over the New Bedford Whalers. Now Hendrigan sending it up looking for Tokeman and Roderick gonna come all the way out of the New Bedford net. Tokeman all the way back playing defense to Hendrigan. Now it's Murphy to Tokeman who's got some room in the far corner. If she can catch up to it, she sends a shot in and it's gonna go in. Alicia Tokeman from Kayla Murphy with 33.45 left to go in the second half. Brockton with a three to nothing lead. So it is Alicia Tokeman from Kayla Murphy. So Murphy's got a hand, or rather a foot, in all three boxer goals, two goals and an assist. As the temperature drops here, it's now 58 degrees. We're down four degrees. We are down four degrees from when this game kicked off. Thirty-two thirty now left in the second half. Now Lena Marion with it. With launching a shot! And that's another goal for the Brockton Boxers. Lena Marion with a snipe. Goalkeeper. 
Four to nothing boxers, 31 20 left in the second half. Goals scored in the 31st minute of the second half by number three, Nina Marion. We are now joined by the official title, not so newly named athletic director, Kevin Cairo. Mr. Cairo, you come back, the boxers score two quick goals. The heat comes on in the press box. So two quick goals for the boxers. And four to nothing over big three divisional rivals, New Bedford. Huge success against the big three. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things. Oh, here we come. Come out. Not a girl. successes against the big three for the Lady Boxers team. You gotta be thrilled with the performance the Boxers have put on against the division. Yeah, well I mean one of the things that I took a little heat for, and I wouldn't say heat, it was just, you know, kind of a little critical is that we put the girls up against some very good teams and um, early on and I think that in order to to get ready for big three and get ready hopefully for the playoff run you have to put yourself in a spot where you play better competition and, and kind of challenge yourself so I think those things are starting to pay off in which the girls saw what they needed to work on and we talked about this earlier before is their conditioning was something that was lacking and I think that coach Glenn and coach Kaprinsky and coach Norman have uh, driven that point home with the girls and um, it's obviously paying results when it comes playing our, our big three rivals. So I'm happy to see this. But last year, guess what? We did the same exact thing. We started off slow, and I'm a big believer in it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if they continue to work hard and come together as a team, that we could surprise some people hopefully in early November. Goal scoring was going to be the biggest question for the boxers this year after Gabriela Del Pico was told she couldn't play for her high school from the developmental academy team she's playing for. Eight goals and counting so far against the big three. It's been almost a non-issue. Yeah, and it, we, there's some girls that have obviously stepped up. I mean, we just saw Alicia put one in from the corner. She's only a sophomore, and we've got Jayla down there, and she's only a junior, so, I mean, there are some good young players out here that I think they kind of maybe relied a little bit too much on Gabby and didn't find their own identity. But now that they know that it's, it's them, and uh, I think that they'll still step up. And hopefully this is a trend that will continue. The Bedford about 15 yards off sides. I was going to say more like 18. 18. <laughs> about 18 <laughs> yards off sides. Brockton free kick just inside midfield. Oh, what was that? Somebody get kicked. It's a little takedown from behind. So free kick for the Whalers as Alyssa Arujo went down to the turf. The big news: injuries becoming a factor for the boxers. Oh. Senior captain, Janae Demanche Silva. Broken collarbone mm -hmm. on the turf in Weymouth. Yeah, Saturday was just a, a weird day weather-wise because we had our freshman football game here. Started at 10. Um, no rain at all until the game was over. And apparently over in Weymouth, which is maybe 12 miles away from here, it was pouring rain from the time they got off the bus until the game was over. A nifty move. We heard it was a, a fluke play where Janae went up and jumped up to try to head a ball and came down. Couldn't get her feet under her and 
kind of bounced off the turf and Ugh. they went the collarbone. And I think that's uh, two we've had in a week from different sports. I want to say that we had one girls soccer and one in football. And at, at the uh, oh, freshman so level. Of course, two, Friday night we took quite the beating from. Let's not BC talk about Hyenas. the past, Matt. We're, we're talking about Severia this week. Talk about the atmosphere of Harvard University. Oh. That place was loud. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, you could literally hear. If there wasn't a game going on, you could hear people's conversations down on the field that were a good 75, 100 feet away from you. Oh, it was definitely a, a great experience for our kids. In the band. Oh. I was surprised when I saw the band getting off the buses. Yeah, well, I mean, you should have seen what we had to go through to get the band to perform at halftime. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, shot oh. and another goal for the boxers. Is that Jayla? I think that's Jayla. Jayla Smith. Getting this one past Alyssa Roderick. We will not see a change at goalkeeper for the Whalers as the only other goalkeeper listed on their roster is the senior co-captain and starting forward, Haley Almeida. New Bedford's gonna call their timeout with 24-47 left to go in the second half. It is now four to nothing. Boxes on yeah, top. I think it's actually five. Five-nothing. Boxes on top. Oh, but going back to what we had to do to get the band. So there's probably five minutes left before the half, and I can see Vinnie McCrina, and, I mean, he is he's amped up more than usual. He's, you know, I, see the, I, I just see the arms waving. He's, he's flagging me down. He's going, Kevin, Kevin, we've got a problem. We've got a problem. I'm like, Vinnie, what's, what's the matter? They're not letting us out on the field. So I go, what do you mean they're not letting you out on the field? So I go to the, the guys from Harvard. I'm like, what's the deal? It's not written in the agreement that the, anybody can be on the field other than the football. I said, this is our band. We brought them here. I mean, we, they, they spent close to a couple thousand dollars to get the buses to come to perform. I mean, this is something, well, it's, it wasn't agreed upon. So we go back and forth, back and forth. The only person that can override it is the AD from BC High. I'm like, you do realize he's coaching in the middle of the game because it's John Bartlett, and he's the AD and the head football coach from BC High. Like, if you think I'm going over there with five minutes left in the first half to say, can the band come out before the halftime? You're crazy. So we found the assistant AD. He ran over to the sidelines. So we don't know if, the, if we're going to get, we're in, it's in the Coliseum, we're going to get the thumbs up or the thumbs down for the band coming out. So I've got my, fo I have my phone ready. The guy calls me. It's got to be quick. You got to get them out. They got to be in and off the field in seven minutes. Right. <laughs> so, it's about a 12 minute show. So I tell Vinny, I like, Vinny, you, you, you've got like a minute and a half to get the kids out on the field. So it's the first time I think that a lot of these kids have run since middle school. <laughs> in the physics. It was quite the sight and watching. Just, and to see that, it, it, kids it, you know, you've got 150 and you've got the majorettes and you've got the uh, the halftime the, the dancers and the flags. You've got the color card that has but, to put their flags in. Oh, specific and I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God, if, if somebody with the tuba goes crashing down into the turf, it's that's all on me because I'm out there going, Ron, you've got to run. You've got to get out there. But, but it, it's all about the conditioning. It all comes back to conditioning, Matt. But no, the kids were super excited to play out there, and they and they really gave the BC High fans a, a, an and unbelievable show. Stellar. And and the thing that I thought was really good about the, the best part of it all, it's the first time that the football team has ever seen the halftime show. Because they're always in the locker room. Right. They were they were in one of the end zones. Yeah, they were in one of the end zones, and you could see and. Uh, oh, no. Now another shot, and this Ooh. one's picked up by Roderick. And you could see that the kids were really appreciative of all the hard work that that band does because, I mean, they're out here late night under the lights, and uh, it showed. I mean, it was it was amazing, and the acoustics in there for that band was... If you haven't had a chance yet, watch the replay because we had a stellar view from the press box. 
we were the whole game we were overlooking the Boston skyline. We had the Sitco sign that was all lit up. Okay. We, we, Mike the Postman Simmons, phenomenal job on the visuals. Yeah. Zoomed all the way into Fenway and got us the Sitco sign. Really? And it was clear as day. David's with it on the near sideline. Is New Bedford stepping up their attack and not going to try to get that one as it would have been offsides. And this coming Friday night, traveling down to the Hawk Bowl. Mm -hmm. Which I can honestly say I've never been. You've never been to the Hawk Bowl? No, I've never been to the, I've been to Zavarian when I coached um, a freshman baseball team and we played over there, but I've never been to a football game there. It is very interesting. As New Bedford with an opportunity. Arujo with a shot and an excellent save by Tori Viola Lawford. The first really true test of the night for the senior goalkeeper of the boxers. Making no mistake. Hawk Bowl, a very impressive turf field. Yeah. Giant blue X right at the 50. I'm well, pretty sure this is the first Friday night game we're ever going to play there. We've always played on Saturday afternoons. Sad. There. Um, I, I don't know, but I saw that uh, they've played Everett. Um, they went down to White Plains, New York um, last week and played um, CM. Beat them this past week as well. Just, yeah, so they're one and three, just like we are. They played CM in White Plains? New no, no, no. So they, they opened up with Everett. They lost. They played BR and won pretty Fair handily. Uh, no, they beat. The BR was hanging tough to, yeah, but the they, first half. They ended up, uh, I want to say it was 38-7 final. And then they went to White Plains, lost, went, played CM, and lost. So they're one and three, just like we are. So they're going to be <laughs> not too happy. The thing about the game against BC High, and I still believe this, we could have and should have won that game. The oh. plays were there. It came down to drop passes. Drop passes, missed, missed tackles. Missed tackles, missed tackles is, right. is something that I saw when we had guys that were literally in the backfield with no place to go and just couldn't wrap them up and bring them down. But we held this stud yeah. running back, Danny Abraham. I mean, he had two touchdowns, yep. but he but only really had two or three big runs. Big runs. He, he did. Halfway through the second half, five to nothing, the boxers over their big three divisional rivals, the New Bedford Whalers. Who will see in a few weeks down in New Bedford on Friday night. And New Bedford is going to be. Well, everybody that I've talked to recently said that the marquee matchup here in Southeastern Mass is going to be New Bedford versus Brockton and boys soccer. That's that everybody's saying that the two teams are both very well coached, very disciplined, a lot of talent. That matchup got very, very heated last year. Yes, it did. Brockton had a lead. New Bedford got frustrated. And, and Durfee, the Durfee game here got heated last year, too. Oh, yeah. And I remember us hitting the crossbar with um, under a minute left to tie the game. Because that was for the big three championship we played for here. Three boxers converging on the ball after a misstep by Almeida. Now David's to throw this one in. It's almost that time of year where we start seeing players wearing sweatpants under their game shorts. That's true. 
And I just don't know why they don't make just a long pair of soccer pants with the stripe down the side, especially around here. I believe that was Topin tripped up. Well, it looks like our ball, our ball girls have gone for the evening, it looks like. That's one of them. Now they're there. They're there. Just blending into their surroundings. First corner of the night for the boxers. And headed out by the whalers. Now the three on four up turf. And Brockton comes away with it. Other than the rapidly dropping temperature, beautiful night for soccer. Yeah, I mean, it's not windy. Quite the difference from when this game was originally supposed to happen. Yeah, when I think it was 50 mile an hour winds, little sideways rain. <laughs> Just a little bit. Though. I think it was like an inch and a half of rain per hour or something. Yeah, it was, like it was something messy. Vanessa Dos Anjos. Shoot it. Dos Anjos running into a whaler. Now it's a foot race. It's going to be on sides. New Bedford breaking away, and it's Arugio with a shot. Oh, that's and a great excellent play. excellent diving stop that's by Tori Viola Lothary. Got it, girl. Ella Lothry has just been stellar all year. Oh, she's been fantastic. And I remember just there, were, there were a couple, I forget, early on in the year, without her making at least 20 really good saves, it could have gotten up. I mean, it could have gotten ugly. He knows the Oliver Ainge game. Yes. And now getting back, but a shot, and it's going to be a goal for the Whalers. Number 12 of the Whalers, Peyton Calvo, senior midfielder, putting that one home. A couple of platoon substitutions for the boxers. Running five to one with 15 minutes left in the second half. Isn't that a nice picture I took of the girls earlier? This is a good one. Follow the Brockton Athletic Director yeah, on, on Twitter. No, Facebook. We, Facebook. We, yeah, we, we have a Facebook page, Brockton High Athletics. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We don't have Instagram. One thing that I don't have yet. I don't. I saw one. No. It's going to be a uh, like a parody account that's been posting for you. I, I have, gonna have to do some social media research. I right have here. posted absolutely nothing on Brockton High Athletics. Boxer Athletics. That's not me. <laughs> well, anyway, on Facebook and Twitter, it's at boxer underscore athletics on Twitter. I think it's underscore sports. I think it's Brock. I think you're right. I think it's at boxer underscore yeah, sports. Yeah, at boxer underscore sports. And I think it's Updates on everything. We try. And then on Facebook we are Brockton High School Athletics. There it is. You can follow BCA on Twitter. Live tweet the football games and periodic scores. We are at Brockton Channel. You want to talk to us? Hashtag BCA Sports. Oh. 
Yeah, this one's loose and pounded into the net. Oh, boy. Whistling stop jump. This one might. Number 11 scoring this one. And the goal waved off. It's a goal. A lot of confusion. Sam Panaccio, the sophomore, assisted by Peyton Calvo. And now Brockton's going to use their timeout. Timeout called by Brockton. Some great pictures on the at Boxer underscore sports Twitter. Well, thank you, Matt. It was a great panoramic of Harvard. Yeah, that's that's a really that good awesome. one. I saw that shot when I was out on the 50, and I said, I need to capture this. And with a little editing on the phone, it came out good. You know, my wife's a photographer, so I mean, I learned a lot from her with lighting and, you know, getting things out of the picture that don't belong. You are by far the most technologically adept athletic director we've ever had. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> and I still have a lot to learn, too. You might have to make an offer for the Boxer Athletics Instagram. We could do BHF Athletics. There's a lot of things we can do. All right, time out. And this is one of the things that we talked about time and time again is it's getting a little bit later in the game. The legs on is fresh. And if they want to contend later in November, they need to be able to keep their legs under them for a good 90 minutes. This is... That's Alicia Talkman. I think this is one of the coldest games they've played so far. Yeah, but once you stop moving, I mean, they're all... They're all warmed up. Just can't get sloppy. It's five to two now with 12 and a half minutes to go. Five goals for Brockton. Two of them scored by Kayla Murphy. Kayla Smith with one, Alicia Tuckman with one. And I believe and a Marion with the other boxer goal. The two New Bedford goals. One scored by Sim Panetro and one scored by Peyton Calva. Yeah, I gotta say, New Bedford's got a little bit of fight in them down there, which doesn't surprise me. Going to be a goal kick for the boxers. out of bounds by the Whalers throwing it'll be taken by Murphy sending it ahead looking to connect with Dos Anjos and picked up by Avery Robert the freshman goalkeeper for the Whalers it's curious where is Jayla uh, Smith Did she bump up from mid to where they have her they have her on defense. Yeah, but, but she's there's been a few changes. Yeah. Due to Janine. Yeah, and I think that that is, uh, I think that's a really good spot for her. I think Jayla's got one of the stronger legs on the team. Hendrickson's moved up to forward from. Midfield. Mm -hmm. Olivia Shaw has also moved up from defense in mid to forward. Well, I'm sure we'll see some JV players get called up. I mean, they, the JV girls team, they won today 9 nothing. A 
Alicia. Talkman again looking for her second with a oh. shot. And a nice save by Avery Roderick. David's taking this one. Big week in sports. You get a triple header on Friday. Mm -hmm. Triple header on Thursday night in the pros. A lot of channel flipping. Yep. Thumbs are going to get a workout. It what's, worked, we're what's excited. What's your plan of action for the rest of the week? <laughs> um, let's see. Tomorrow and Thursday, there's, we don't. I don't think we have a little ton going on here at the stadium. So maybe actually be able to get home in a relatively normal hour to have dinner with my bride. And um, Friday, girls soccer. We'll watch that against West Bridgewater and then uh, head down to Westwood to Zavarian. Come back here on Saturday for JV and freshman football. Be back here Monday morning for boys soccer. And then we're excited. We have um, G Week coming up next week. And you familiar with G Week at all? I'm not. Yeah, it's uh, it's Gatorade. Um, we have a Gatorade vending machine. We've purchased, I mean, a number of things from them last year, this year, just to give out to the kids, protein bars and things of that nature. And because our vending machine has done so well uh, in the gym lobby, they are going to give every fall athlete uh, product on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week. So every freshman, JV, varsity team, so we have s close to 600 of them. So we, we have 1,800 Gatorade products getting shipped in tomorrow on a couple of pallets <laughs> that we're going to give them out. I just think it's great. I mean, it, it's, it's part of the whole um, sport nutrition that we're trying to teach the kids to eat healthy and to fuel up. And after the game, the importance of protein in the diet and, and Gatorade, and, and they give this to us which is in the first time we've done it, so um, I'll let you know how it goes. G Week, there you go. Of course, Gatorade, quite the history. Created at the University of Florida, Florida. Yep. by some scientists, and for years, other schools were like, they've got this magic juice, they're cheating, it's spiked with steroids, and this, that, and the other thing. No, it's just electrolytes. Mm -hmm. A little bit of sugar. A little bit of sugar. Excellent block out in That's front. That's a real good block. And it's sent out now with 6.45 to go. That's why it's called Gatorade. So yep. if, you, if you guys didn't know out there, invented at the University of Florida, home of the Gators. to aid their football team against other schools. And it used to be just that nice neon green. And yeah, the that's swamp, the original. The swamp that's, the, that's the original. And another corner kick for the Whalers. Florida needs all the help it can get after suspending eight of their 11 starters for the debit card fraud. Oh, I did not read that. It's been an interesting year in college athletics. Rick Pitino losing his job. Mm -hmm. Along with uh, Tom Jurgen, the athletic director at Louisville. This one off the football crossbar. I mean, a lot of college sports have just, it, it's a business now. I mean, it is such a business, especially if you're a marquee school, Division I, basketball, football. I mean, there's millions upon millions of dollars to be made. And, and I always found it amazing that you would uh, have a football coach that would be, I mean, somebody like a, um, you know, Urban Meyer or, um, Nick Saban. Talking about the University of Florida. Yeah, so they would be making, I mean, significantly more than the professors that were working on 
cancer research. This was shot an excellent save by Tori and, Bell. And often. Nobel Prize winners and, and things of that nature. It just makes you kind of step back and think, you know, priority-wise. I just saw a list published by Forbes mm -hmm. of the highest paid public uh, employee in every state. In 43 states, and this one's going to go off the crossbar and end it. Don't call it a comeback <laughs> for the Whalers. So now we're within two goals with 430 left to go. In 43 of the 50 states, the highest paid public employee is an athletic coach. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the state <laughs> for the state for the state college yep. system. Wow. Michigan, it's Jim, Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh. Yep. Ohio, it's Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer. Bama, it's Nick, Nick Saban, Saban with five and a quarter million a year. Wow. <laughs> Dabo Swinney. Okay. Who in Massachusetts? You remember? Massachusetts, I don't. Off the top of my head, it was one of the UMass coaches. But I can't remember was if it was it really? football or basketball. Wow. Number 12 scoring that goal, her second of the night. And of course, is Peyton Calvo. Oh, good sloppy ladies. three minutes ever right here. Well, don't forget, you say that now. <laughs> the last two minutes of the game last week lasted four minutes and 51 oh, seconds. Oh, and you, and you got to put it on the timer, aren't and we, you? And we got the stopwatch. <laughs> My mistake, I said 43 states. It's 39. Okay. Just a little but bit. But still, off. that's uh, that's significant. Pennsylvania's James Franklin, 4.4 million. Kansas, Bill Self. <laughs> How much is he making for basketball? 4.94. And, the, and they can't pay the kids 20,000 a year. No, they shouldn't get paid. I'm sorry. We could, I we, we, we could go on and on about that. No, but it, I always say, where does it stop? I mean, if you've got, if you want to have equity and say that, you know, all sports and all student athletes are, are equal because they represent a school. So you're going to pay somebody that's playing water polo at UCLA 20 grand a year? I think you break it into three tiers. You've got the tier one sports, basketball, football. Every single member on the mm -hmm. team makes the same amount of money. That's, this is the one thing that you have to understand is that the programs that make the money are the ones that are successful. But I mean, football as a whole, they lose money. Like Division I football, honestly, I would say that they there are more schools that lose money than make money for as far as travel, equipment, coaches' salaries, and things like that. And when you pay everything out, so you're going to pay somebody for, I mean, Oh man, Johnny, Johnny John Cal Calipari, six point eight eight mil. All right, who's number one? Jim Harbaugh at seven. Jim Harbaugh seven mil. Nick, Nick Saban, Saban seven point zero nine. Wow. I'm trying to dig up the Massachusetts winner. Bronco Mendenhall, bottoming out the list, 3.25 million in Virginia. He's a football coach. Chris Peterson in Washington. Bob Huggins at West Virginia. All right, Matt, I'm going to start heading down to the field so I can be there for the handshake. But uh, to you and your wonderful partner over here, Jay, thank you. 
for having me up here in the booth. Got to thank the cameraman for today's festivities. Yeah, so we have uh, about, about ten seconds left. No, no, Aaron. It's not Mike the Postman Simmons. No deliveries to the viewers of Brockton today. It's the one, the only, the Zeppelin loving Jay Miller. Five to three, maybe about oh, 15 seconds left. Whistles blow. It's a little bit off. Whistles blow. This game has come to an end. Brockton escaping. Time was their friend in the later stages of this one. The final score, five to three. The Boxers now two and zero in the division. Three and five on the year. That's a big win for the Brockton Boxers again. The final score, the New Bedford Whalers three, the Brockton Boxers five. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Jumpin' Jay Miller. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. <laughs>